Okay, I'm going to talk to you about technology in schools and the transformations that, that are happening and are possible. Um, recently, uh, statistics have revealed that the average 14-year-old has six digital devices at home. Children from as young as two, one, lower, have, have access to iPads, um, tablets, laptops, any, any number of, of, of devices. And schools are making great strides using technology and the, there's currently a fair amount of, of debate and discussion about the impact and, and the outcomes that are available. For me as a teacher and having technology in the schools, I've, I've seen it start from a computer in the classroom that we hid away in the corner like that piano under a sheet so that the burglars wouldn't find it. And, and as teachers, we didn't know what to do with it. We didn't really know what could change. Eventually, we started word processing, typing things out, adding pictures and text, but nothing particularly transformational, transformational occurred. This was in the uh, Sunday Times yesterday, and I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you. An education minister has signalled the end of the traditional teacher as the role changes beyond recognition due to new technology. Matthew Hancock, the Skills and Enterprise Minister, unveiled plans for computers to take the lead in imparting knowledge. Ministers have set up a Whitehall unit to examine how children can be taught by computers that use sophisticated algorithms to set the pace according to individual ability. Hancock believes online tuition is incredibly powerful and could help to raise Britain from the bottom of the international league tables. I'm, I'm speaking to you as a classroom teacher who's um, restraining myself at what I want to say about that. So I shall share with you perhaps an approach about how teachers, schools can make the, the best use of technology without blinkered top-down vision about what teachers and children get up to. The teachers in the classrooms of this country and around the world do amazing jobs and do embrace technology, do want the highest standards and do achieve results that if you read the papers you may not believe. However, I'll share with you something which is an approach which has happened to me and we're talking about um, sharing ideas that work. This is an idea that I share which makes a difference to children growing up to form the society that, that, that we are now part of. So, as a classroom teacher, I've been in the classroom for almost 20 years, and, and I've, I've painted it dark, like sometimes it's called the black box. It's, 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 it's not very clear what goes on in there. I can tell you an, an awful lot does go on in there, but it's, it's a very lonely job happening within the four walls of the classroom. Teacher grafted in a way dedicated to the needs of the class, looking for progress, looking for inspiration, and, 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 and looking for challenge and change. It's technology that has allowed a, a, a huge change for that to happen quickly, really. The, the work that, that one might imagine goes on in, in the classroom takes place in exercise books, and the children will write their work, and teacher will, will, will tick their work, and all well and good. We, we sometimes question who sees that, what's the purpose of that, beyond the fact that the, the, the work is neat and we show it to the, to the parents in the head, beyond the fact of that, what, what really is, is the value for the real world. So, <clears throat> come parents' night, we might add a few extra stickers on so the parents know that we're paying attention to the children's work. If the head teacher wants to, to monitor the books, take them in, we might, we might add a few extra ticks and comments. If there's an Ofsted inspector approaching, we, we may add more comments. If we decide our comments aren't particularly good, we might hide them under the, the desk and hope he doesn't find them, but it's, it's all kept in the book. And I ask myself, as a classroom teacher, is there a better way? I, I'd started to explore, explore technology. Is there something else that can, can happen with this? One thing um, that I've always been interested in is, is, is the power of the internet. And this is, this is an internet blog. And the purpose of this, for me as a teacher, I'm, I'm, I'm presenting children's work online and inviting other teachers in to share their views. So the purpose of this piece of child's writing, I wanted support on how I could help that child move on, what standard was it at, what level was it at, how could this help me as a teacher? And the, the exciting thing with the technology is that, for, for, for instance, that one piece of work, I, I, it, it received about 5,000 words of, of dialogue from other teachers, um, 24 comments on one piece of work, sharing views 
and training one another. Teachers are very, very good at sharing and want to share. We support each other and would bend over backwards to help. Um, the thing that, that, that changed this for me is that particular work um, attracted a, a fair amount of detailed commentary from a lady called Ros Wilson. Ro Ros Wilson is a, an expert in teaching writing, a global expert in teaching writing, and she's developed methods of assessing writing and bringing children on through, through marking and analysing over 20,000 pieces of, of children's work. And she'd chosen, virtually via the internet, to come in and give support to me and the teachers that were reading the, reading the, the internet site. And as a teacher, that level of training, that level of connectivity with a, with a world expert, I'd never achieved before. And it, it, it lit a bulb in my head as to what was possible. Um, it kind of, I, I struck it like this. The, 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 the dark classroom I showed you of the four walls, it opened a window to connect with. And once that window was open, what, what came through it was um, unimaginable, really. I'll stress again, the teacher is central to everything. That quote, that, that remark I, sh I showed you at the beginning from the Sunday Times perhaps misses the point of what teachers do and what teachers are capable of. Teachers want these connections. So from this, I'm looking at myself as a teacher. I, I got the chance to learn how to use technology. This man I'm with is um, from Boston, USA. He's called Greg Kulovich, and, and he is an expert in educational technology. And what Greg taught me is that technology is a tool, simply a tool, not to, not to replace anybody, not to change anything other than reach higher standards for children, to get them to places quicker than they could before and to take them to places that they couldn't perhaps even conceive reaching before. And I'm beginning for, via the internet to learn quite a lot about bits and bobs. I'd never, up until 12 months ago, I'd never shared any of my ideas with any audience whatsoever. Um, picture here is a Canadian teacher, Michelle Cordy. She taught me virtually via Skype how to go from the very beginnings of sharing ideas with an audience into communicating with a large group. I feel I've got enough to share and I needed help. And as, as a teacher, I'm always learning. That's the best part of my job. This is something I'll share with you which influences the work that I'm going to, 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 to move forward. But again, via the internet, the access I had to teachers such as Jim Smith. He, he's a teacher from Essex, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jim. But he, he um, wrote the Lazy Teacher's Handbook. Now, now, Jim is not a lazy teacher, far from it, but he asks in, in any classroom, who's doing the work? Who's doing the most of the work? Is it the teacher at the front? I'm sorry, I'm getting cross at, the, uh, at, at the, the minister before. Is it the teacher at the front spoon feeding the children, ramming knowledge down their throat, or is it the children in the class, the pupils in the class, are actually rolling their sleeves up and exploring problems and overcoming difficulties and rising to the challenges set before them? So, bearing this in mind, the fact that exposing um, the wider world to me as a teacher brought on my skills vastly. The first question I, I asked is how can this impact on my children? This technology is moving so quickly, what, what can be done? What can change? And the first thing that struck me, going back to the window idea that I shared before, is making the school walls transparent and sharing good practice from the wider world into the classroom, but actually sharing the brilliance and the talents that the children have out through those windows of the school, again, to be exposed, to, to take its place alongside world leaders in, in different fields. So from there, the idea of pupil ownership of work is something that's so empowering and transformational in, in, in terms of their value of it, their, their connection with it. This is an example of a learning wall, which I use in, in, in all schools that I work with, where children have ownership of what they do. They choose to present their work their, their own way. They, they have their own um, vision for it. And they accept feedback. They're accountable for it. From, from the youngest age, children do not need a pat on the head and a little tick saying, good, good boy, well done. They need to know what they can do better. 
and what might have been the best bit and how, how can they move it forward. There's a post-it note on the wall from the head teacher who's passing through making remarks. It could be about presentation, it could be about spelling, it could be about the overall theme of it, but it's, it's, ex it's beginning to realise that children will learn more from having their efforts exposed to the, to the world. From this point, the idea of sharing this work, I'd started to use internet blogs, which are very powerful, yet feedback and meaningful comments is the most crucial thing for children. And on every piece of work now, I put a real audience at the end, a real outcome. Some individuals here have agreed to be part of a guest markers program. And all that means is they, they sit at the end and I can take photographs of work, I can, I can put it on an internet blog, and, and these people can provide real world feedback and expertise that me as a teacher, I can't do. I can tell the child how to get from a level three to a level four or how to improve the sentence structure, but I cannot help them as um, Katie Hart did there. Katie works for Too Simple um, Purple Mash. They produce apps and educational software in, in London. Our pupils developed an app and it was sent off to London and the meaningful real world feedback that came back from Katie was so empowering and, and, and realistic and enriching to what was um, possible for the children that again, me as teacher, I, I couldn't do it. Other individuals that have, that have given feedback and there are plenty, as teachers, people want to help us and all we have to do is ask and teachers can facilitate so much support from the, from the wider community. Um, there's a professor from the university, this is, this is Jim Smith, the lazy teacher, he couldn't refuse having, having suggested who's doing all of the work. This is something that, that Jim actually suggests, who's doing all the work, hand, hand responsibility for marking over to members of the community. Um, as Julie Sykes, she's an author, Andy Comfort reads the news on our local radio. You've met John this morning. John actually chose to do his marking in person. He came in and he met the most vulnerable members of the class and the inspiration that they found from 10 minutes with John looking at their work is irreversible and continues. Um, one of our guest markers is Member of Parliament for, for Hull East, Carl Turner. And Carl, again, this is, this is children choosing how they want to share their work with Carl. They researched uh, democracy, Parliament, his background, his life. These codes, by the way, easy enough to make. They, they can be scanned and take the, the, the viewer to online content. In, the, in this case, it was, I, I think it was a video about, about Parliament. But Carl came in to score. And as much as he was quite bemused by the, the, the number of shrines to Carl at the back of him, he met a class of children that never knew more about Parliament, the, the democratic process, about his role and background as, as an MP than he'd ever met before. And it, it comes down to what I've mentioned before. Technology was involved completely, but it's the, it's, it's the, the, the teacher has facilitated that connection with a real and meaningful audience. The previous week, from his office in London, Carl had marked their books. He'd sat down late at night and he'd given them feedback about it. It was a debate that the children were writing about, about the structure and the language and the arguments of the debate. Um, further ideas, again, to connect with the community. Pieces of uh, history work displayed in the local library. The codes, again, take the viewer to the, um, the video online. This library didn't really have many of our parents or grandparents visit it, but the moment the children had work that they could be proud of on the wall in that library, in the history section, the pester power of children to take their relatives down, say, Mum, Dad, look at this, look what, look what I've done. It makes learning matter and it switches it back on. The example here is from a primary school in East Hull and pupils had been studying the book Pick Heart Boy by the children's laureate Mallory Blackman and, and they made some documentaries about it and, and some, some online content. Easy enough with iPads and other tablets. The children do it effortlessly and, and, and have taught me everything I know on, on using the technology. But the, the way Twitter works here, the school is saying, Mallory Blackman, please look at our work. Within an hour, the children's laureate who'd written the book that they'd all loved had replied, and said how much he'd enjoyed the work, how, how, how special and amazing it was. And the power of that, and there's, there's, I won't name him, but there's, there's a young boy, um, he was nine at the time, and he was 
exceptionally disengaged in the classroom. Writing was a challenge, behavior was a challenge, motivation was a challenge. He didn't want to be there. And actually, sometimes that was reinforced on his behalf. It's clear you don't want to be here. OK, that's, that's the level of disruption. This project alone, it's, it's his work that she's responding to here, was an immediate transformation. That audience and that impact and that making work matter changes lives. And, and the, the technology is a tool to accelerate and, and, and enhance that further. Ways to do it. The, the, the prime message for, for us, go back to the exercise book. Who's looking? Asking that question. The ways to do it, the audience is everywhere. Suggestions that, that I would in include would, in the context of e-safety, of course, but using blogs, using Twitter, sharing work with class, inviting guest markers, inviting um, the local politician, the local librarian, the local councillor, the school caretaker, people from different areas of, areas of expertise to demonstrate that these children in their, in their classrooms are not just going through the motions. Their work does matter. Shows and events involving parents in the community, that resource is so rich. And as schools, people want to support us. We just have to ask. I'll leave you with this as, as a final thought for me in terms of, of, of what technology perhaps can, can, can accelerate for us. We can make learning matter by connecting young learners with the society they will grow to shape. And the power of that is immense. So thank you for listening. <laughs>